Hey, I'm Brian Van, Sport by Tracker.com, and today we're going to break down the Arai Quantum X helmet. The Arai Quantum X sells for $611 to $746 as of the time we're shooting this video. Please understand we don't update videos for price changes only if the product itself has been redesigned. The swing in price goes from solid, which starts at $611, up to some of the different graphics like we're showing you here on the table of graphics are a few dollars more. What do I think of this helmet? I've done a fair amount of riding in this helmet. I really like it. What's not to like? It is an Arai. Arai is something different. This is a marvel of engineering more than it's just a helmet. And in this video, which is going to be a little to the lengthy side, we're going to cover some of the things that make Arai special. Who is this helmet right for? This helmet is right for anyone searching for a premium helmet that offers tremendous performance. Arai is one of the only, is the only helmet manufacturer out there currently that is building three different head shapes. The Quantum X is an example of a variant for head shape. This is more of a round oval design. So if you know you have a round oval head shape, certainly this helmet's right for you. This helmet is gonna be at home, on the street, or the racetrack. It is a Snell certified helmet. Depending on the vintage of the helmet, it could be a 2015 Snell, it could be a 2020 Snell. As we move forward through 2020 and beyond, they will then all end up being eventually 2020 Snell. Please understand too, those certifications are very close to one another. And as I understand it, I don't believe Arai had to make any changes to their design in order to pass the 2020 cert compared to the 2015. At home, on the street, or on the racetrack. If this gets you a better fit and you're a racer than the Corsair X does, absolutely feel free to pull the trigger on this. The level of safety is the same as that, right? The only thing you're gonna miss is just a little bit of the ventilation and some of the aerodynamics of the Corsair X. You can see that with the lack of the diffuser, but still, fit is always the most important thing. It determines safety and performance of a helmet. An ill-fitting helmet, regardless of cost, is not going to perform or protect as it is designed to do. Weight and size. This is a size medium. It weighed 3.55 pounds on our digital shipping scale, which is the sweet spot that we have seen for the Snell certified helmets in a size medium. The Quantum X is a round oval head shape. This is one of the three, as previously mentioned, that Arai offers, the only manufacturer doing it. I measure 58 centimeters on the button with more of an intermediate oval head shape. I've done quite a bit of riding in this. It's a size medium and I felt that I got a good, comfortable fit from it. I feel that it would protect me well. It didn't create any additional road noise. It did feel, to be honest, a little more roomy in this area. I would say the swing between this, the Corsair X, which is intermediate oval, the Defiant X, which is intermediate oval, it's not leaps and bounds, right? It's not yards. It's, it's literally, it feels like it's just millimeters. So there's a lot of intermediate oval riders that if you're looking for a helmet like this, you want an ride, but you don't want a Corsair X with the additional ventilation and the uh, additional diffusers on the top, this will probably still be a good option for you. Remember, when you're buying a new helmet, everything starts off with a good measurement, okay? You want to measure just above the eyebrows. We have a whole video on this. Look for that. We'll break it down. If you don't have a cloth tape like this, use a string, something that's not going to stretch on you. Mark it and then measure it with a steel tape. Begin with that measurement. Then use the size chart. Also, look in the mirror and try and get a sense for what your head shape is like if you don't already understand it. If you're closer side to side to front to back than you would be if you were intermediate oval where you're a little longer front to back than you are side to side. The Quantum X was purpose built for you. I'm gonna just repeat once again, being an intermediate oval head shape, I still got a comfortable fit and very good performance from this helmet. When you get the helmet from us, it's also important to note, we want you to wear it in the house quite a bit before you go out and ride in it. It's gonna come with a sticker on the shield leave that there. Put the helmet on, strap the helmet up, 
and wear it long enough in the house to determine whether or not you're happy with the, the fit before you get on the motorcycle. If you're not happy with the fit or you have questions, reach out to our staff. We're going to work through it with you. And if we have to, we'll get you exchanged and get you into a different helmet. It's so critical that it fits right. It doesn't matter how expensive it is. If it's ill-fitting, it won't perform or protect the rider as designed. Glasses compatibility. As with we found with the other models in the Arai catalog, this helmet works great with glasses. Let's break down some features and benefits. We're going to start off with the ventilation. That is almost every rider's number one desire. Good ventilation. Intake vents up here on the top. They are switchable. Multi-step. The action is very smooth, very high quality. Those are intake vents. We have intake vents up here in the brow area. Those are integrated into the shield. There's little ductwork in there. I'm going to show you that. That's really bitching. It's like a little engineering marvel here. And then, of course, your chin vent here. This is used to introduce air into the helmet as well as to diffuse the shield, right? Even though it comes with a pin lock insert, which is included and goes right on the clear shield, right? There are conditions that can begin to overwhelm that. This demisting feature can help keep the helmet fog-free in almost any condition. Exhaust vent switchable here in the back. All the way to the right side is open. Half open and closed. Venturi style exhaust vents are built in to the back of the shell here and then they have integrated into the neck roll another Venturi style exhaust vent. Like I said, engineering marvel. It creates low pressure when the air is flowing over it and there are three holes that are on the back side of this and there's heat that gets trapped back in here between your neck. Right There's this little open area between the neck roll and then the bottom of the top liner. Heat gets trapped in there at speed. This works to suck that out of the helmet. The chin vent has air deflected right to the mouth, right? And it'll also direct air up over the shield itself. So there is a tremendous amount of ventilation that is built into this helmet. <coughs> a number of shells. Arai uses five different shell sizes. Extra small is the first shell. Small, alone again, second shell. Medium and large each share the same shell. Extra large has its own shell. Double X also has its own shell. While we're on the topic of shells, these are literally handmade in Japan by craftsmen, experts, that are making what they believe to be the finest motorcycle helmet in the world. Look at the quality of craftsmanship in this. They're using different materials all throughout the shell as required by data that they've you know, learned over the years and accumulated over the years to help best manage rider impact. The shape is also extremely round. A round shape helps to prevent the shell from catching on imperfections in the pavement. If you're sliding and it catches, that is going to be a huge hot spot. It, it creates a hot spot. Massive energy transfer can create a tumble. None of those things are good. So they stick hard and fast to the round shell shape. You'll see that throughout all their helmets. They believe that is the key to the kingdom. Let's give you a close-up look here. I'm sure this has changed slightly over the years. This shell was built in 2010. There's a sticker in it. And you can see all the different materials and different thicknesses, if you have this in your hand, that are used strategically in different spots of the shell. And this is a, an old Corsair shell. The EPS is also very unique to a ride. This is multiple density material that are blended in. You can see the different colors throughout. Some are softer, some are firmer. It depends on the location in the shell and what the data they've collected dictates is necessary to effectively manage crash energy in a certain spot. And I realize this is a long ass video, but this isn't just a helmet. This is an awry. This is like a feat of engineering, okay? Removable, washable, replaceable liner, all high-end fabrics. You are also, and we can give you a closer look at this when I disassemble it, in both the temple area and the cheek pads, there are 
peel away layers. So let's say that you get the helmet, you wear it a while, and it's a little snugger than you'd like it. You invest some time in break-in, but still in the temple area, it's just a little tighter than you'd like it. You can peel those layers away. It's going to open the gap up without having to purchase any separate liner pieces, and you're going to be able to dial in the fit and personalize it just for you. That is also unique to Arai. The shape of the cheek pad and the multiple materials they use in the cheek pad, I'll show you this closer up later on, is designed to really help cradle your face and make the helmet easier to put on and take off, but then still hold firmly once you have the helmet strapped up so that you are getting protection from road noise and the helmet's not moving around on your face. The Quantum X comes with a large chin deflector, and you can see that this hangs down a little bit. This is designed for two reasons. It's really designed to keep the helmet quiet. This is kind of built towards the touring market, even though it's completely at home on the racetrack, but by protruding down, it helps to deflect the air at the bottom of the helmet to keep it quiet, and it also gets more of the exhaust from your mouth to go through the chin vent, okay? So that's kind of a dual purpose. Let's say that you're track riding with this helmet and you don't want to use this. This piece is definitely removable. It takes a little effort to do that. Kind of pull out here at the back first. Then I'll come over to the other side. I'm pulling in and up. That releases it. The ones in the front, there's two clips here. These are a little tougher to get out. Put the same type of pressure kind of down and in, and then back and wiggle it around a little bit, and it pops out. The cheek pads are also emergency release cheek pads. It comes with the adjustable chin diffuser as well, so if you want to ride without the large chin curtain, you still have this in place, and you're able to adjust it to help, once again, create that bubble in that area and quiet <coughs> the wind in that spot. The shield that's used on the Quantum X helmet is the same one that Arai is currently using on their Corsair X, their Signet X, Defiant X, as well as the all-new Regent X. These are much easier to change than all the previous generations of the Arai, and I'm going to show you how to do that. We're also going to shoot a separate video on how to change the shield on the Quantum X. It's available in tinted, mirrored versions. Remember, it ships with a pin lock insert okay so fog free performance is amazing with that insert install it in there and it is going to change your life let's say you want a drop down inner screen that's a, a feature that's really important to you Arai will not put a drop down inner screen inside the shell of the helmet when you do that you have to make structural changes to the helmet to accept that drop down visor that would go inside those are going to include removing material from the EPS you have basically a void inside then an open area and they're just they will not compromise the safety of the helmet they believe the helmet's number one purpose is to protect and it's really hard to argue with that logic for that reason they developed an external drop down visor system they refer referred to as the pro shade system the quantum x is able to accept this it requires a purpose built clear shield with hinges externally that accept the drop down outer shade. This does not actually touch the clear shield, okay? So it's not scratching it up, anything like that. And it's able to pivot up and down. There is a detent, so that's held in place firmly, right? And then when you push it all the way down, it's gonna be in that field of use, and now you have a tinted shield up and down just like that. I've ridden with it. When it's in the upward position, to be fair, it does create a little bit of noise. It's not horrendous. It doesn't sound like a jet airplane or anything, but I just do want to point out the fact that because it is up in the wind, it does alter the noise level just a little bit. Now I'm going to show you how to change the shield on the Quantum X. First thing you do is you bring it into the upward position. should probably cover the fact this is a locking shield. You put it all the way in the down position, and to get it to lock, you need to push in very gently. To release it, you push up on that and then lift up like so. It's really easy to do when you have the helmet on. So once again, you push down, push into lock to release, up. To remove the shield, you push in on this trigger. The side plate pops off. That stays locked in place. Go to the other side, do the same thing, and then you grab the shield and you kind of rotate forward like so and literally off it comes. 
It's that simple. Another big improvement with this current generation of Arai helmets is these side pods are tethered to the helmet. What used to happen is the shields were difficult to replace, people wouldn't get them installed correctly, and these side pods would sometimes pop off the helmet due to the incorrect installation. Arai solved that problem with the tether, and they've also solved the shield problem by making it much easier to change. Reinstalling the shield. Support the helmet like so, grab your shield like this, you've got this little brass tab. Okay, that's gonna need to dip into that hole, so I slide the shield over, rotate it into about that position. That's gonna dip down, the trigger releases, you can now grab the side plate, slide the tab from top to bottom, and then push down, it locks in place. Rotate the helmet, grab a hold of the shield, I'm holding it kind of by the edges. Rotate it until it slides over the pivot. Watch that brass locator slide into that channel. Grab your side pod, top to bottom, little pressure, trigger releases. Very important, push all the way down, lock it, release it, lift it up. Before you take the helmet out for a ride, after a shield swap, you want to do this a couple of times just to make sure everything is good and secure. Okay, now let's take a close look from the inside out of our Arai Quantum X helmet. Start with a shield, we've already shown you this. Release your side pods. Get the shield removed. We'll begin with the chin curtain. I want you to grab it here by the edge. You can feel the hard plastic push in and towards you like that. Right, release the other side in towards the center of the helmet and then put some light pressure. You want to repeat that for the tabs that are up front. These are a little trickier, same type of pressure. And I find that if you rotate it around, that really helps to release it. That's removable, this is not. Although it moves, it is not intended to be removed from the helmet. To remove the emergency release cheek pads, you can grab onto, if you want to, the emergency release like so. That's one way to do it. You then need to release the neck roll from the inside of the cheek pad. There is a little pocket right here. Grab your cheek pad cover. Grab the fabric and you see this little tab that slides into this pocket right here. You need to make sure you release that. Out comes the cheek pad. Repeat the process on the other side. If you don't want to pull the emergency release, you can simply grab onto the top portion of the cheek pad. You're going to pull right here and pull down. It releases. Same deal with the neck roll. You've got to release that from the pocket in the cheek pad. Pull that out like so. For the top pad, you have two snaps in the back. Get your thumb between the EPS liner and the back of the top pad. Once you find the snap, a little pressure, you're able to release it. There are also two snaps up front. These you can see. It's kind of hard to show on camera because I need to see them too. Once you find them, get your finger, thumb between it, you're able to release it. The neck roll on this helmet is also removable, washable, and replaceable. Kind of grab it and I need you to Hold it here firmly and kind of rotate it in one direction like that. This will release it. Give you a closer look at that exhaust vent that's built into it. It's kind of a rubber material. You can see the intakes here. And if you feel right inside here, there's a hole, there's a hole, and there's another hole that allow this to draw that heat energy from inside the helmet when you're moving down the road. Before we take a close look inside there, <clears throat> I want to focus on these cheek pads and that facial contouring that they do. You can see that in action here. This is the front of the cheek pad. If we remove the outer fabric cover, here is the pocket that will allow you to install any of the universal communicator systems right there. You can see they have molded into the EPS backing of the cheek pad a pocket to accept those. The peel-away layer, if you need a little more room in the cheek pad area, 
it's this outer layer right here. If you look at how it's glued, it's not glued completely. It is glued in segments, so you're able to release that. Carefully peel away and remove that layer if you've determined that you need more space in the cheek pad area. Also note all the different densities of foam that they're using here. This isn't just your standard cheek pad, okay? This is, once again, a marvel of engineering to get that awry fit, feel, and performance. This is what it takes. You'll even see here on the inside, there is a plastic flap, okay, that works to have that kind of that hinged feel so it just cradles your face right here. This is really cool. A lot of technology and engineering goes into just the cheek pad alone. Here is your top pad. It's a little round oval badge here. The peel away layer for your top pad can be found right here on the side. And once again, you'll see it is just kind of glued to the other layer just with segments of glue, right? So it's not complete. It's very clear which one you're pulling off. If you need more room in that area, you're able to peel away the layer and it's going to open it up in that spot. Let's now take a close look at the inside of the EPS. This is really tough to show because it's black. <coughs> but you'll see for ventilation, they have two holes here in the front, two holes here in the back, and then one hole here in the center. So we have three exhaust, two intake here. Also, intake here in the chin area, right? Right in the mouth area, you can see that's one of the intake vents. And then up here at the brow, Arai will not put holes in the shell in this area. They feel that is a critical impact safety area. So for that reason, they will not put holes. That's why the shield has the vents built into it. These line up with this duct work right here that then blows back air to cool the rider in strategic areas right into the temple area is what they're aiming for. This is really pretty cool stuff that the outlet is right here. Okay, so it's directing the air using that duct work. Comparing head to head the Quantum X and the Corsair X, which is their, their upper end model. You know, one of the differences if we look from the inside out that you're going to notice is simply this one's using more holes in the EPS, okay? You lose one in the center in the back, but you have two, two in the middle, two in the front, and then one more up here. So at the end of the day, you have picked up two additional holes in the EPS for simply more ventilation. With that said, I've ridden in both quite a bit. The Quantum X still ventilates quite well. This is a really deep dive on this helmet. You know, my goal here was to show you all that goes in to the Arai. These are really different. There's a lot of great helmets on the market and I'm not coming out and saying this is the greatest helmet ever in the world. I will say that the Arai helmets are all top of the food chain helmets. <coughs> we all have different desires. We all have different features, benefits, head shapes, and fits that we prefer, right? Very few riders are disappointed with a ride because of all they put into the helmets. The round shell shape is an additional element of safety. It's something they believe in very firmly. All the engineering that you see into the cheek pads and the different things they've done, I think it's quite impressive. And at the end, it renders a complete package that every rider, almost every rider, finds very positive and satisfying. I love the helmet. I think you'll love it too. If this is in your price range, it's the right shape for you. Pull the trigger. If you have any questions, just leave those here in the comment section of this video. I know this video is super long for a helmet. Understand I'm here to help you get the most for your buck and get the best possible experience with your new helmet.